guys, see, when I hear them swearing, I'm growing up now. I'm going to swear. I'm 13 years old. I could use that. You know. So we're like sheep. We follow all the evil, and we think we're going to be cool. And uh, that's, that's sad. All right, we got one more we're done. The seventh commandment says you're not to commit adultery. But before you answer, Jesus said, if you just look at another person and you lust after them, like sexual desires, you've already committed adultery with them in your heart. So have you ever looked at anybody else with lust? Yeah. Forget about having sex even though you're not married. I'm not going to go down that road. But just a look. Right? I mean, just think about that. See, this, this, is, this is where I find God, with his son Jesus, raised the bar. Because this happened to me April 3rd, 1994, is when my eyes were open. And I hope tonight maybe you guys, your eyes will be open. See, that I knew I was going to hell based on what I did. And so basically, in your case, you've admitted to doing what? Lying, stealing, swearing, and adultery in your heart. If some wacko jumped the curb right now and he killed us all. How do you think God would find you based on those commandments? He's standing right here. This is a big plasma TV screen that you're looking at, and it's all your lives are on there, and you can't deny anything you ever thought, anything you ever done. Do you think you'd be innocent or guilty in his eyes? Be honest. Guilty. Guilty? Guilty? Huh? Come on, would you be guilty? Huh? Now, if you were guilty, guilty? Yeah. You broke the law. Remember, I only asked you out, so I was kind. I only asked that you ever, which man, I only asked you if you ever, I didn't ask you how many times you lied, yeah, but mouth's open now, yeah, see how many times you lied, you stole, you, 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 see the compounding? Okay, so just run, so now if that were the trick case, where then would God have to send you heaven or hell? Be honest, this is your life now, it's all over because you don't have second chances, you're dead. Huh? You don't really believe that because you know there is no purgatory, it's another lie. I feel certain that that was where I came from. I used to be Catholic. Purgatory is what they taught. There's no mention in the Bible. I finally read it because they told me I couldn't. There's no mention in the word purgatory, but it sounds a lot better, doesn't it? To you, and you can do John and that. Yeah. Not true. So be careful. You know friends who are Catholics? Talk to them. You've got to get them out of there because they're being led to hell. Heaven or hell? Where are you going to be going? Down there. And I love how people do that, go down there. They can't say the word hell, even though I just repeated it. It's funny. You know what I had one guy say to me one time? <laughs> he, said, yeah, yeah. he stamped his feet. I said, where did you be going? Heaven or hell? He went. And I looked at him and said, can't you say the word? <laughs> yeah, it's horrible, by the way. I don't think you guys know why. Now, here comes an important question. Does that concern any of you? That is a possibility. I mean, I don't know. But based on your lifestyle, you could be headed for hell. Does that concern anybody here besides me? Yeah, right, yeah, right, right. How about you? So wait, could be think about it. Here's a problem I've seen sometimes. Don't know what hell is like. See, so that's what I find. They don't know because they don't hear about it. And the Bible is very clear once you understand this. Jesus said that there's a place where your thirst is never quenched. Never quenched. Think of your thirst, never quenched. You remember being out here when the airplanes of the Phoenix Harbor could not take off the ground? We had 121, I think it was, 120 some odd degrees, you remember? They grounded the airplanes. It's 120 degrees, they couldn't fly. Too hot. How about 12,000? How would you like to be in an area atmosphere of 12,000 degrees? Not just 120. He said, thirst never quenched. He said, there's constant gnashing of teeth. Worms never died. Total darkness in a lake of fire for eternity. Not a fun place. Not a fun place. Right? See, if we really care for people, we should be out there warning everybody. I mean, I know what it's like. I read it. I understand it. It makes sense. I wouldn't want anybody to go to hell. I don't know you or you or you. will never see you again, maybe. But I don't care. I wouldn't want you there. I have a desire to help you. Nah. So I hope this makes sense to you. Your lifestyle, the fact that you've lied, you steal, you I don't know if you fornicate, but you have sex before, any of those things you do to break God's laws. Here's one that most people do, is breaking the second of God's Ten Commandments, and I have to throw it in there. The Catholic Church got rid of it, by the way. How was like that? I learned from the Catechism. You know Catechism? That's what they taught. Huh? The second commandment is not what's in the Bible. They got rid of it. You know why? It says you're not to have any graven images, no statues. What's in the Catholic Church? Yeah, all over the place. I remember St. Joseph, St. Jude, St. John, St. Mary, you got <laughs> all over the place, right? So they actually got rid of that commandment. How's that? Bye. How's that? We'll take care of God. Say, get out, we're not doing that. So what the man has done, so man now has created a God in the own mind. 
one that agrees with them. So they do whatever they do, it's okay with their God. They, 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 he's going to let them go, it's okay. And that's called idolatry, it's the oldest sin in the book. And I hope you don't go down that road. Because the righteous God, he was a true God, he was a holy God, he cannot be in the presence of anyone who's not. But there is a solution. Do you know what God did for us and we wouldn't have to go to hell? Do you have any idea? Anybody know what God did so you wouldn't have to go to hell? Yes? Got a yes? No, we'll talk. It's okay. He knows it. I don't hear him. He's in his mind. He's holding your hand. Who pulled your hand? There we go. Kind of. It's in John 3.16. But let's make it clear. It says, So God so loved the world, He sent His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. And raised as a child, right about, you know, think about that, as He comes in a baby, grows up, never sinned, and they crucify Him. They beat Him with a whip with fish hooks on the end so that when that end of that whip hit his back, it tore the flesh off his skin. And then they nailed him to the cross to save a scumbag like me. And that's how we call you love somebody. So he took on the punishment, the sin of the world, to save us. But that you can't stop there in too many places do, because then they're saying, well, everybody's saved. And it's not true. Because Jesus himself said, unless you repent, you will perish. Now, let's repent. I mean, repent, repentance, you matter repentance. It's turning away from See, look, I'm going to go this way now. Right over here. Mm -hmm. This is the direction I was heading, just like you guys. I swear, I fornicate, I stole, I did it all. No big deal. But once I understood, when God opened my eyes on April 3rd, 1994, my life changed. And when I understood, I just had to repent. Ask God for forgiveness, and then I place my trust in Jesus Christ alone, not a priest, and alone. Full with forgiveness by sin, he said it's been white clean. Then he that black chalk bird, and he just wiped it clean. It's like it never happened. Remembers it no more. He said as far as the east is from the west, we cold. And then what happens is it's called being born again. You receive what Jesus gives us. It's called the Holy Spirit. See, the difference is we can't change ourselves as we are, because we love our sin. And we just drink it up like water, we make all kinds of excuses. But when you receive the Holy Spirit, now it's inside, that's the concept of being born again. You're changed from the inside to the outside. And what I used to want to do, I don't do anymore. And what I loved to do before, I don't do anymore. And one of the prayers I learned was that when I knew what I was doing that I shouldn't be doing, I asked God to help me hate that sin as much as he hates sin. And then I would ask myself, or I'd ask you, would you do what you hate? Think about it. See? Would you do what you hate? See, I find too many people who claim to be religious say, well, I ask God to help me with my sin. I ask God to take it away. I say, yeah, I know you're asking to take it away. And if it doesn't go away, whose fault is it? His. They can still blame him, can't they? But what if you ask him to hate it? Like he hates it. Does that make sense? So, by the way, you don't qualify for the ghost stick, I'm sorry, right? Because that's not a good people who put good break all of that. But, because of God's grace, you get a ghost stick. So, it's in Ephesians 2, 8, 9. It's not me making this up. It's very clear. It says, by grace you've been saved. It's a gift from God, not of works. See, you can't do it yourself, not of works, so that no man can boast. Now, I know this is pretty horrible. Remember, Jesus did what for us? And that was a graceful gift he gave us, and what am I giving you? A glow stick. That's pretty sad. They're not going to sick me. But people are drawn to the glow stick, and that's why I use it, so that maybe then I can share that information. Otherwise, they never would stop to listen to me. <laughs> I got that old guy up there. What the heck is he talking about? No, but they want the glow stick. So reach up, and I got, I got a whole bunch more. You pass them on, and I got some information for you. I love to have you read. I don't like that one. I'll give you another one. Yeah, you got two. Yeah, give me one. All right. I got a whole bunch. All right. All right. Yeah, this is really cool. You need to have this. You know,